Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about one of the tools that I use all the time, and I'm actually sitting by it. It's a downdraft rocket pellet fed waste oil heater. I've been working on this, tinkering with it for the last four or five years, and now we've got it running efficient and hot enough to actually do forging. And I thought it would be an excellent video for the prepper community. Um, it, it's, it's a tool that we need that we use every day. Every day I get up when it's cold and I light the heater. It's like 19 degrees outside and this thing's running at about 650, 700 degrees right now. I'll check it in a second for you. But the, the forging was just kind of a, a bonus. I knew it was getting really hot in there. It was eating up my grates and I'll show you uh, what I've come up with on the primary and secondary burn chamber. Uh, this is some of the stuff we forged. I forged this for a friend of mine's wife. What is that? It's a fire poker. Show it. Big nice one. So how did you make those curves? I uh, just stuck them in the stove and it gets red hot and you twist it any way you want to. Uh, this was another fun project, a knife out of a railroad spike. That was actually a cone bit and uh, the material must have been pretty good because it got really sharp uh, after I hardened it again. But that's kind of a bonus. And you'll see stuff hanging on this. Um, it's a pick, hardened pick. Uh, this is one of the things I made when the little kids were over when we did our treasure hunt. We'll do that video later. It's been a lot of fun, but the main thing is heat, not being dependent on the grid. Me and Stacy were talking about that. She'd normally be on here with me, but she's actually holding the camera. Because I've got, I want to walk you through this completely. Why don't I do that now and not get too sidetracked? Okay, so what we have is our pellet hopper. Uh, hardwood pellets are in here. You don't have to use pellets. You can take this off and put wood in here. It's a down draft and it's really efficient uh, at burning just the tips of the wood. It's not very much fun trying to split wood in those small pieces. That's why I resorted to the pellet hopper. Didn't you at one point though use pallets? I did. I, uh, I would go to the pallet place, but then you got a tear apart the pallets and it's and you always have to mess with them to try to feed them in there pellets are $5.99 a bag but you also have the option to use regular wood or anything you know I've got some coal over there I'm experimenting with on the forging and so far it, it you can hear it it draws enough air you don't have to use any kind of blower to do your forging. So this is your, your gate to shut the pellets off and it'll burn that out and then I thought that was it goes cool. out. You showed me how to run it the other day. That was really cool. Pull it out, your pellets fall down. This is our waste oil drip. It's actually going a little bit too much. There it goes. So this is used motor oil, it goes up here. It's not the safest feature because this thing can get away from you and glow red and start to you know <laughs> kind of warp on you uh, but if you'll just have it cracked and I'm not recommending anybody do this par portion um, it, it, it could be dangerous if you have it cracked and the heater goes out the oil cools off and it stops dripping it's pretty neat we have a pan under it in case it does no, you know, run too much, it'll drip out and go in the pan. Now, the, this is a heat exchanger. It's a propane tank. Propane tank, propane tank. That's why I thought it was really cool. You need a little bit of pipe, a short piece of square tubing, propane tanks, and you're pretty much in business. This piece of pipe goes into the heat exchanger and it comes all the way up. It's, all this is welded. There's another piece in, the, in here and it stops here. And then the heat has to come all the way back down to come out of this. And the reason why I have all this metal 
scrap laying on it because that's just more stuff that could absorb heat and 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 i would really like to have it even more on it i actually we actually cleaned it off the other day so that's pretty much it in a nutshell give them a view down here and down here you're going to notice it starts burning right up there and as they get smaller it goes through here that hole is to put your stuff in that you want to forge this is actually a idler so I can stick that up there and it really slows the pellets down it'll just barely burn them so when I go in the, when I'm done and I'm going home I can just shut it out shut it down to where it's just barely burning and then when I want it to run again I can just pull it back out now Pull that out. I wouldn't mess up the fire. Yeah, I can pull it out. You've been through a couple of these. I think I can pull it out. Let's see. A few, a couple, a lot. More than a couple. No, probably not. Can I? I got a picture of it from earlier. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll just have to run that other picture. This right here is how you adjust the pellet feed. When you run these down, this comes down and it makes that square tubing get closer to the grate and it, it slows them way down. That's how you control how much pellets fall into it. You move it up, more pellets, it gets hotter. If you're using oil and pellets, uh, you don't have to use as many pellets. And a lot of people don't know what to do with their used motor oil. And it's a great way to extract some BTUs out of it. Is there anything I'm leaving out? Keep it going. I'm going to add a little drawing on the side. So just so everybody understands, this pipe, which is like this, and then it comes up like so, and it's open-ended. Your pellets are coming in here on a slight angle, so that's going to be hot. Your square tubing comes through here and your pellet hoppers up here. So the pellets come down into the burn area. The heat and the fire comes up here to the top of this and then your heat exchanger is right here. And then your stove pipe goes here so your air is coming through here pellets are here and it, it gives it more time to get out otherwise you know it would just rip right up the, the stove pipe but that's pretty much it um, it's something we use all the time and that's we're going to start doing more videos on that. I would like to do, if you guys are interested, I have been a professional metal fabricator, pipe fabrication, pretty much my entire adult life. And I'd say yes, for sure, my entire adult life. And this is one of the things that I've built that I really use all the time. And I think anybody could do it with a certain few tools that really wouldn't set you back that much and I think would be absolutely necessary to have in some type of well any situation it doesn't have to be grid down or anything like that it could just be you needing to repair your neighbor's tractor or repair your own stuff or you name it I think everybody should know how to weld at least a little bit and it's really not that hard especially with 
you know, the right tools, and it doesn't have to be that many, you know. Small little welding table, small welder, small way to cut metal, maybe a couple ways, plasma cutter, cut off wheel, torch, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I do a lot of this on the Taylor Welding Channel, and I plan on building another one of these and walk you through exactly how to do it. And I have some improvements I'd like to make too. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. It helps me. And have an awesome, awesome day. Later.